As we think about what good policies look like and the agenda, we can't forget that, again, as I started off, we worry about you know, what's needed to even develop a good framework for the emergency of these centers in communities that are not freighted by deeply challenged communities. But uh, you know, again, coming back to the realities of Baltimore, as we talk about how we get to this very uh, exhilarating endpoint, I have to again come back to you know, how are we going to think about the problems of the chronic underclass, family breakdown, deep social alienation, um, you know, low completion rates in, uni in uh, high school, public school, uh, gang violence, drug addiction. We're living these things with great, um, great power each and every day in Baltimore. And to the extent that we talk about an endpoint of a carbon-free, innovation-oriented, export-oriented uh, uh, metro uh, unit, I'm still thinking about the 600,000 citizens of Baltimore which have disproportionately suffered the inflictions of these problems. How am I going to get that community there? And, the, and, and I think about that a lot as a leader of Johns Hopkins, but it's a critical component, component of the conversation. One last, to my mind, really bracing uh, statistic that, that demonstrates the urgency of this. You know, we don't have a problem in Baltimore, in the region, in terms of demand for jobs. What we have, of course, is a classic mismatch between the labor force we have, its low level of skills, and the demands of the industry around us. And what we've got is a real tension in that we can't align the two. 